Hello friends, this video on states of matter part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 10. Now let's study ideal gas. So what is ideal gas? We talked a lot about ideal gas and real gas. What is the definition of ideal gas? So according to chemists, any gas that follows Boyle's law, Charles law, Avogadro's law strictly is called ideal gas. Any gas that follows all these laws strictly is called ideal gas and is actually a hypothetical gas. There is no such gas that exists. Hypothetical gas. right? And it is assumed that the intermolecular force are not present between the molecules in ideal gas. And that's why they behave ideally. And that's not the truth. In most of the cases, intermolecular force do exist. We have learned about London, London force, dispersion force, double dipole, and dipole and uh, induced dipole. You have some of the, in, the intermolecular force that do exist between the molecules in a gas, but it's assumed that there's something of ideal gas where there is no uh, intermolecular force existing between. And that's why we say that uh, most of the gas behave like ideal gas under low pressure and high temperature. Right? Why? Because at low pressure and high temperature, the intermolecular force is very, very minimal. And that's why it says the real gas follows these laws as ideal gas law, only in specific condition where the force is practically negligible. The intermolecular force is very, very less then this real gas like oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, all these gas behave like ideal gas when the intermolecular force is very low. In other scenarios, they deviate from the ideal gas behaviors. And this scenario happens when the pressure is low and temperature is high. And as I told, so this pressure is external pressure. So if I have some uh, molecules in a balloon, let's suppose. So if my pressure, external pressure is low, uh, I'm not binding these molecules, they're free to move. Also, if I heat this, temperature is more, they keep juggling around, moving around here at the higher speed. So if they are uh, busy in moving around here and there, the, the intermolecular force between these molecules, these molecules is less. And that's what you want. If you can minimize the intermolecular force, a gas behaves like ideal gas. So we can minimize the intermolecular force between the molecules in any gas by heating it up or decreasing the external pressure. So we have, will have something called ideal gas equation. So ideal gas equation is nothing but PV is equal to nRT. It's very easy to get actually. So we have all this uh, three different laws. The first one we had was P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. The second one we had was uh, V is directly proportional to T. Uh, the Avogadro we had was V is directly proportional to N and we have one more gay lussac law that is P is directly proportional to T. Here my V was constant, here my P was constant and here my T was constant. So we combined all these you get P V is equal to NRT. You see P V they are together, V is directly proportional to T. P is actually proportional to T and R is one constant they have added and this is called universal gas constant because this value is same for any gas, any ideal gas actually. And V is also proportional to the number of moles. So PV is equal to NRT where P is pressure, the external pressure, V is the volume, N is the number of moles. R is the universal gas constant and T is my temperature. So at STP the value of R is this 8.2 into the power minus 2 liter ATM per Kelvin per mole. And the ideal gas equation is nothing but relation between the four variables and describes the state of gas actually in their called equation of state. And we'll see that the value of R, we have different values of R actually. So we'll explain that in the next slide. So if you see the value of R are different. So if you talk about uh, the last slide we took was 8.2 to the power minus 2 liter ATM per kilogram per mole was this. This is my STP. 
because everything is standard liter in volume pressure in atm but if my liter is in cent uh, volume is in centimeter cube i get this so if you see this unit depends actually more on the pressure so if you see in both the cases my pressure was atm atmospheric pressure so if you see the values are same just you divide or multiply by 100 thousands but the values remain same right it's 82.1 or this is 82.1 into the minus 3 but if you take the pressure in pascal this becomes 8.314 joule per kelvin per mole so if you see that depends a lot on the pressure if the pressure is in the atm you get this value if it is in pascal it is this value We'll explain more about the units of pressure and the units of volume in the next few slides. But just understand that the, the value of R changes and most of the equations you get, they'll be giving the value of R. So you don't need to worry about it, but just be aware that the value of R changes based on the unit of pressure and volume. The, the, actual, the absolute value, uh, this, uh, I mean, the value changes based on the unit of P and V. These value, this value. So if it is ATM, it is 82.1 in, in that fashion. If it's Pascal, it will be 8.314 in that fashion. So this becomes centimeter cube, it will be something else. Right? So hope you understand this logic. So it's atmospheric pressure in Pascal, which defines the value of this. Let's take one question uh, on the ideal gas equation. The question says at 25 degrees Celsius, my 760 mm of pressure of pi 600 ml of volume, what will be the pressure at the height where the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius and the volume is 640 ml. First thing to note is, let's see if the uh, units are same. So let's assume this condition is all condition 1 and this condition is condition 2, sorry, this is not come, condition 1 and this is my condition 2, correct? So let's assume my condition 1 has P1, V1 and T1. What is the pressure at condition 1? 760 mm of Hg. What is the volume? 600 mm. What is the temperature? 25 degrees Celsius but we know that it has to be in Kelvin so we will add 273. So this becomes Kelvin. Let's talk about the condition 2. Pressure 2 is what we have to find. Volume 2 is what? 640 ml. Temperature 2 is what? 10 degrees Celsius. We convert this into Kelvin. So you see all this is matching. Milliliter, millimeter, Kelvin, Kelvin. So we have this formula P1, V1 by T1 is equal to P2, V2 by T2. And please note this is called combined gas law. I think I skipped this. This law is called combined gas law. So let's put the values here. So I have to find uh, P2 here. So P2 will come out to be P1 V1 by T1 into T2 by V2. Let's put the values here. So or P2 is nothing but P1 is what 760 mm of Hg. So I'll write 760 mm into V1 the 600 ml 600 put the unit also by T1 that is uh, 25 plus 273 that is 298 Kelvin into T2 283 Kelvin and V2 640 ml. So ml ml cancel, Kelvin Kelvin cancel. So what I am left with is 676.6 .6, and this is mm of Hg. Right? This is my answer. This is the pressure. Easy only. Please note that you should write the units but you can cancel it and then you are not confused about the final units. Let's take the relation between the density and the molar mass of a gaseous substance. The molar mass m is nothing but drt by t. t is the density. We can easily get this formula. We know that PV is equal to nRT. This formula we do. Right? What is the n number of moles? That is nothing but 
मास बाय मोलर मास मोलर मास सो लेट्स पुट दिस एन एज नथिंग बट मास बाय मोलर मास एंड मोलर मास आई पुट एज एम आर टी दैट इज नथिंग बट पी वी लेट्स पुट एम हेयर सो एम इज नथिंग बट मास बाय पी इन टू आर टी बाय पी करेक्ट दिस इज वॉट यू गेट सो मास बाई बी इज नथिंग बट डेंसिटी सो मोलर मास इज नथिंग बट डेंसिटी बी इन टू आर टी बाय पी सो एल राइट आर एस कैपिटल बिकॉज बाई कन्वेंशन यू राइट आर एस कैपिटल दिस इज वॉट यू गेट सो यू वॉन्ट वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द मोलर मास इफ यू हैव डेंसिटी यू कैन इजिली फाइंड द मोलर मास ऑफ अ गैस थैंक यू visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again